Hi, this is Lisa. I'm going to walk through the pot getting started chart to uh, take a look here at some possibilities for where I can start in doing an online class. So I'm going to zoom in here. Um, at the top there is how much help do I need and I need to make a decision. If I need lots and lots of help, I'm going to need a lot of hands-on. I'm going to uh, need people to work with me. Then I'll probably start with a college supported technology like Blackboard and use some college supported uh, tools that we have like Camtasia and then I can be assured that I'll, I'll get a lot of help. But if I want a bit of help, but basically I have ideas I want to implement, I, I want to use certain technologies to do certain things in my class, I might want to consider Moodle, which is also um, here at the college, although the support is through an outside vendor. Or I might want to do without a course management system altogether and use a social network or a blog as the heart of the class and have students participate either through their own blogs or on my blog. I might want to use a wiki or, or YouTube or Facebook or some of the many options available to me if I don't need tons and tons of, of hands-on help. But the heart of this is determining how I like to teach and deciding which way to go based on how I like to teach. So if I'm the type of person who likes lecturing or providing my students with a lot of content, I'll go one direction. If discussions or group work are the foundation of my class, I'll go another direction. And if I do a combination, um, I'll go yet a third direction. Let's say I am the type of instructor who really likes lecturing. I like to provide my students with a lot of content. I want some of it through me maybe and some of it through other places, but that's the focus of my class. I'm going to want to think about creating lectures, maybe using video tools or audio tools or writing them out. I might even want to get expert lectures um, from other places like MIT or Stanford. If there's a particular lecture that I just love, I might want to assign that. And then after I've got that together, I'm going to focus on the interactions I want students to have, how I want them working with the content that I've given them with all the material, and how I'm going to assess they're learning based on that content. So that's going to be my focus in getting started. If I'm the type of instructor who really likes discussions and group work and that's the foundation of my class, I want to take a look very carefully at the discussion forums and groups in uh, Blackboard or Moodle and find out if they'll do what I want them to do. If I decide that they do, then I'm going to start setting up my class in one of those course management systems and erase or make invisible all the menu buttons and content stuff that I don't really need to make it very clear to students that the focus of this class is on the interaction, is on the discussion, is on the group work. But if Blackboard or Moodle doesn't do what I want, I might want to consider using a blog or blogs, uh, perhaps from Edublogs or a wiki or a set of collaborative documents and put the interaction there instead and so I'll be doing a lot of work with that. Now, if I am the type of instructor who really does a combination, maybe even a, a half and half, then the first thing I have to look at is how I want things organized in the class. Do I want things organized by the type of content, where I have all the lectures in one place, all the discussions in one place, the grades in one place, the tests in one place? If I want to do things that way, then in Blackboard, that's, that's what it's set up to do, and I can just plug things in. But if I don't like that organization, and I want to do things differently, let's say I want to use units or topic clusters, maybe I want an assessment for each one of those, I'm going to want to do things a little bit differently. For topic units or topic clusters, I might find that Moodle would be the easiest solution if I want to use a course management system um, because it already has a topical format set up. I could also rename and relink Blackboard's buttons, one for each unit. So I could have one that says week one, week two, week three, or whatever the topics are. On a blog or a wiki, if I wanted to use those instead, each post could start a unit, or I could use the blog to assign and link parts of the unit. 
I could also use a social bookmarking service like Digo um, to be a staging area around certain topics where people uh, could collect resources. If I prefer things organized like an actual syllabus where everything is linked from one big main schedule, there are several ways I can do that as well. Uh, Moodle's weekly format is already set up to do this. In fact, it even puts in the dates for you once you set up the starting and ending dates of the class. Blackboard's course menu buttons can be changed so that each week is a button, um, as you do for the units or topic clusters. And a single syllabus page can be created with links to each aspect of the class. So if you've created lectures or you've created tests inside of Blackboard, those can all be linked on one large syllabus page. Similarly, a blog or a wiki can be created as an interactive syllabus also just by putting links in a main syllabus page to uh, the, other, the other pages and content that you have in the class. So these are the main things that you want to uh, think about as you begin your class and going through the chart can be helpful in determining which direction you should head and what you might need to learn to be able to create an effective online class.